Well, if you're confused by what it all means, well, you're not alone. The economist Stephanie Hale is here to help us unpick it. It's not as if the uh, wages uh, forecast for growth, the growth in wages was downgraded just a little bit. It was halved. Why? Well, this is it. I mean, it's such a mystery because we saw at the same time the UK growth forecast was increased to 3.5%. So what Governor Carney is really telling us is that, yes, it's great to get people working again, but everybody who's working is not feeling the benefits of this recovery. So it might be okay to have a job, but you just got to suck it up if you're not getting paid very well. Well, I think this is something that we may have to really accept now is that we may be seeing a decline in living standards that's going to be lasting over the long term. And there's no possibility of leverage for um, employees that are poorly paid. Well, this is it. I think a lot of people are so scared and scarred by the depression mm -hmm. and recession that we've seen in this country that they aren't asking for the wage increases that we might expect. And employers are taking advantage of that, perhaps. There's also the fact, though, that they're having to pay into pension schemes. And we've also seen an increase in the labor market supply. We've got older workers staying in work longer. We've got more people working now than ever before. So that's great. But at the same time, it's a sort of a surfeit of labor. And it also suggests that actually uh, the, the lower paid jobs, the unskilled jobs are on the rise. And actually the high skilled economy is not taking on more workers. Well, that's another thing. And we have to also remember the fact that minimum wage is going to be increasing in October. So we may start to see a rise in this. There's every possibility that this could be a blip. That's, that's the mystery right now. Is, is this sort of a long-term trend or a short-term blip? But why has it confounded economists so incredibly? Oh, this isn't the only thing that's confounding economists about this economy. There's also a productivity gap yeah. right now. So we're less so, productive than okay, we are less productive. So basically, the economy is set to grow by 3.5% next year. But our productivity is particularly poor. How do you yeah. square that one? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can score that one. I guess you could start by trying to disaggregate it and say to yourself, for instance, we've got more people working. So we're still producing, but it's taking more of us to produce maybe a little bit more. Whereas if fewer people were working more efficiently, you could, you could play it that way, but then you'd but, have a higher unemployment yeah, number. Yes, so in fact, so, that, that, that is the gamble for, uh, for the government, is that they exactly. actually want to put the unemployment figures down, and the unemployment figures are lower than the last six years. Exactly. And that looks better, actually, and it's more culpable with and the idea that people actually are failing, even in some cases, to live at the cost of living. Well, this is what we're going to see, I think, in terms of the political blowback from this. We can expect to see the coalition partners say this is a victory. We've got more people in work. Unemployment has fallen. It's great. But we, sh we should expect to see the opposition Labour Party really just having a field day with this. I mean, Ed Miliband should be landing punches every week in Prime Minister's question time, saying, "Why? what are you doing to make it so that people can afford to live in this country and buy homes? Well, but, who take, but who takes the action, then, if there is action to be taken? Is it the Treasurer or is the Bank of England? Well, there's an argument that monetary policy is actually very powerless in this mm -hmm. kind of scenario. I mean, on, inflation's low right now. It's 1.9%. So we're already seeing we've got interest rates at a historic low of 0.5% since 2009. So Carney, Governor, Governor Carney's tool set, if you will, is actually pretty limited. The people who have the power to make some changes are the people in government right now. This mm -hmm. is a policy problem. And what should be done? Oh, gosh, if I, if I, I wish that I knew that. The problem... I hate to say it, is that our biggest trading partner here in the United Kingdom is the euro area. Mm. And the euro area recovery is very fragile. We thought it was doing better. It's actually, we've got the data coming out tomorrow, looking to be worse this year. We've got a lot of geopolitical risk on the horizon. And we've got the problem that Mark Carney, that it was thought that there would be an interest rate rise in 2014. Mm. It doesn't look like there's been an interest rate rise in either of the two coming quarters. And actually it'd be into well into 2015. Now what does that do for savers, for pensioners? Well, it's not really great for savers because the rate increase, I mean, he has stressed this. It's going to be very low and very gradual. I have a feeling that we're going to be talking about this for months and months. So when it comes, it's just going to be, you know, a, more of a whimper than a bang, to paraphrase Elliot. But I think we have to be really aware of the fact that that's not really the issue here. It's, it's not necessarily about the interest rates, although it will be for, the, for you know, people mm -hmm. who are in debt. That's the issue. Stephanie, thank you very much.